Hey, welcome back, I'm Lai. Falcon 9 Block 5, the final version of the Falcon architecture was launched a week ago, and that was a majestic launch. However, what I found from the questions you guys ask me is that many people do not understand clearly the benefits of upgrading Falcon 9 yet again. Admittedly, SpaceX can perform any task with its current fleet of Falcon 9 Block 4s and the Falcon Heavy. So, let me explain to you guys why it is absolutely necessary to build the Falcon 9 Block 5. The rationale behind building Falcon 9 Block 5 can be brought down to a simple set of questions. This set of questions capture the sense of what SpaceX is trying to accomplish with Falcon 9 Block 5. To reuse Falcon 9 rapidly like aeroplanes. Once you understand that SpaceX goal is to enable people to live on other planets, every other decision of SpaceX makes sense. There's no way we can make the Mars trip a possibility if we don't bring the cost down, and the best way to bring the cost down is by reusing rockets. The land them again part is what previous versions of Falcon 9 have been doing. The end again part is what Falcon 9 Block 5 is designed to do. With previous Falcon 9 launches, SpaceX has demonstrated its capability to land a rocket, but landing them rapidly and repeatedly is a different deal. Using different heat-resistant materials is just for starters. Engineers also have to streamline the repair and maintenance procedure to make sure the Block 5 core is ready for another mission under 48 hours. Since Falcon 9 Block 5 will be the vehicle that sends human astronauts to the International Space Station, this procedure will be enforced in the strictest way. Additionally, we have seen many times that Falcon boosters are recovered at land or on the sea, but we have never seen a single booster reused twice. My suspicion is that it does not make sense economically, taking into consideration the risks involved. Therefore, changes have to be made to further improve the Falcon 9. So what has changed? Changes to Block 5 are consistent with previous disclosed details. Elon confirmed in an interview after the Block 5 launch that sea level engines had an 8% thrust increase and the second stage vacuum engine enjoys a 5% thrust increase, reaching 190,000 pounds and 220,000 pounds thrust respectively. This is not the most consequential change in my opinion. The most consequential changes are made to the engines and the interstage a reusable heat shield protecting the engines and the plumbing at the base of the rocket, more temperature resistant cost and machined titanium grid fins at the interstage, a thermal protection coating on the first stage to limit re-entry heating damage. Since this video is made after the launch, we also have the photo proof that these changes indeed made a difference to the return booster. The damages to the grid fins, engines, and the interstage are reduced significantly. The return booster looks pretty fine to me. Furthermore, Elon also mentioned that the Merlin engines on Block 5 are bolted on instead of being welded to the OctaWeb structure in order to reduce maintenance and repair time. As a result, Falcon 9 Block 5 is a much more capable version in the Falcon family. However, despite all these positive changes, it would be unrealistic of us to assume Falcon 9 is a magic bullet and it's gonna immediately achieve what it's set out to achieve. Theoretically, Block 5 rockets are able to launch 10 times without any refurbishment, but it's probably not gonna be the case for the first Block 5 booster, B1046. My prediction is that it's gonna fly for perhaps three to five times. Theoretically, Block 5 boosters will be able to fly 100 times in its lifetime with some refurbishment, but none of the Block 5 boosters will fly 100 times. Elon has confirmed that in this tweet. SpaceX will build 30 to 40 rocket cores for the 300 missions over the next five years. This means most cores will be used just around 10 times. It is not to say that reusing boosters for 10 times is not impressive, it's damn impressive. What I'm trying to say is that the discussion around Falcon 9's capability is not the most productive discussion because whatever the capability of Falcon 9, it is able to complete any mission there is in the world right now. Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy are undoubtedly the most powerful rockets in the world. Therefore, instead, I thought we should focus our discussion on more productive questions like what's next. And this is a far more exciting question. For starters, Falcon 9 Block 5 will be used for manned missions to the International Space Station. 
finally, after half a decade of vacuum, American rockets are once again able to perform manned missions. This will happen in possibly just a few months. I know, scheduled launches for unmanned and manned Dragon 2 capsules are in August and December respectively, but I'm not certain it's gonna happen on time. Now that Boeing have delayed their competitive launch to 2019, SpaceX certainly has less pressure to do it this year. Nevertheless, I'm still hopeful. I think it's gonna happen this year. Secondly, I think this part is not getting mentioned enough. NASA is building a space station near the moon called Deep Space Gateway. It has the funding for it, it has paid for the ride. Although NASA insists on using the space launch system for its mission, I think SpaceX could definitely be a part of that project. Therefore, one possibility of Falcon Knight's future mission is to send resupplies and maybe even components to the moon station. Falcon Knight Block 5 or the Block 5 version of Falcon Heavy could be used for it. Admittedly, the timeline is a bit off. The Deep Space Gateway is planned to be built over the next decade, by which time the BFR could be ready. So if BFR is ready, Falcon Eye is out. Lastly, Falcon Eye Block 5 will be used for Starlink, a constellation of satellites. I can't emphasize enough on the ambition of that project. Many think Starlink is what SpaceX is doing what it has always been doing, sending satellites to outer space. But this statement is not accurate because the scale of Starlink is enormous. 12,000 satellites is planned to be sent to multiple orbits. This is a crucial detail, because the reason why these satellites are sent to different orbits is so that SpaceX could control and coordinate among them to provide high-speed internet to the world. For example, satellites at a lower orbit provide better internet because of the lower latency. But the downside is that it flies over a fixed area in a matter of minutes. This means as a user of Starlink, your internet will need to receive data from multiple satellites instead of one. Therefore, SpaceX need to manage the constellation of satellites so as to make the internet transition between satellites smooth. This is just a simplified version of the example to illustrate my point that Starlink is a grand project and that Block 5 is necessary to make it happen. Overall, it's going to be a great decade for SpaceX, and we're lucky to be here to witness it, or maybe even participate in it. After decades of progress, the industry has finally realized the value of privatization, and Block 5 is yet again another example of a private company demonstrating its incredible capability. I'm very happy that it worked out for SpaceX. All right, thanks for watching. Thumbs if you like this video, subs if you love this channel. As always, I'm Lei, I'll catch you guys later.